be seeing the procedure as to how to do it. Here we have four samples. The first step is to add the sample reagent as double volume to each specimen. Care must be taken to use only one sample reagent bottle for one specimen to avoid cross contaminations. Once the sample reagent is added, it is shaken vigorously to ensure complete homogenization and also to trap any mucus particle that is trapped at the bottom of the lid. Then the samples are vortexed vigorously to ensure uniform homogenization for about 30 seconds. After completion of all the samples, the tubes are left to stand at room temperature for 10 minutes. with an intermittent viewing to see whether the sample has homogenized completely. At the end of 10 minutes, the tubes are visualized to see if any more mucus particles are left and then it is left for another 5 minutes. Now, it is time to label the cartridge. This is the MTB RIF cartridge which has which is provided with a barcode. The lot number is also there along with the expiry date. The sample ID or the laboratory number should be written on the side of the cartridge which is provided for any labeling. Now, the tubes are labeled with the lab number. And once all the cartridges are labeled with the lab ID, the samples are loaded onto the cartridges. About 2 ml of the homogenized sample has to be added to the cartridge. This is done using an independently packed pasture paper. 2 ml of the homogenized suspension is taken. It is added to the cartridge through the aperture provided in the corner. The pipette is discarded into the de disinfectant bath. Now, the Cartridges are ready for loading onto the machine. Here we have the 4 module machine. The system provides a laptop or a desktop, a barcode reader and the 4 module machine. Now, using the login ID provided for the user, we can enter into the software to start the test. And then when we click uh, start a test, the lab ID may be entered before that the barcode is read using the barcode reader. And then the machine indicates the slot. The lab ID is entered onto the patient uh, details column and the cartridge is loaded onto the slot or the module indicated by the machine. We can see the green light which is that is the indicator. So, once the, the cartridge is placed, the module is closed. Now, we have now loaded two cartridges and then the run starts. At the end of the run which is about 90 minutes, the results are displayed. Here in this case, 
for this sample MTB is detected and the bacterial count is very low and rifampicin resistance is not detected. The result can be printed as such or the results can be visualized in the graphical form to check whether the probes had been working. No, the printouts can also be taken. Here in this case, it is MTB detected high, but rifampicin resistance is also detected. The next case is MTB is detected with the bacterial count being low and rifampicin resistance is not detected. Here in this case, MTB is not detected. The results can also be stored in the Excel form. So, we will now see the advantages and disadvantages of expert MTB RIF assay. Under the advantages, we see that the rapid turnaround time that is within a, in about 90 minutes time the results are available. The ability to detect very low number of organisms is an advantage. Detection of mycobacterium tuberculosis complex, drug susceptibility testing at least to rifampicin and identification of the organism is possible directly from sputum samples. Complete automation is possible, eliminating human errors and cross contamination from samples. Under disadvantages, the points include false results due to presence of amplification inhibitors in samples is possible with the MTBSA. Cost requirement of technical skill is another limitation. Nucleic acid contamination may yield false results. DNA that can be extracted from dead bacilli, which also can be amplified. Uh, is possible with the expert assay, hence the test cannot be used for treatment monitoring. Stringent methods are required for quality control and quality assurance. The test cannot be used independently for diagnosis. The machine and cartridge are temperature, temperature sensitive, blood and blood tinged samples cannot be used. Welcome to this video demonstration of liquid culture method for diagnosis of tuberculosis. The most commonly used commercial system using liquid medium is the mycobacterial growth indicator tube system from Beckton and Dickinson commonly called as midget. It is a fully automated system using modified 7H9 medium. The system can hold a maximum of 960 tubes anytime and all tubes are measured by the system every hour and interpretation is based on software based detection system. Midget is useful for all types of samples except blood and urine. Let us now take a look at the preparation of the midget tubes for inoculation. Midget tubes are usually stored at a temperature of uh, 4 to 8 degrees. So, for raising a liquid culture, the tubes have to be brought to room temperature and labeled properly. 0.8 ml of the antibiotic supplement Panta, which consists of polymyxin B amphotericin B, nalidixic acid, trimethoprim and azlozulin which are available in a lyophilized powder form has to be reconstituted with 15 ml of the growth supplement and addition of 0.5 ml of the decontaminated sputum deposit should be done. We shall now see the demonstration which is done in the biosafety level 3 laboratory. We have two deposits from decontaminated sputum specimen which have to be inoculated and two midget tubes have been brought out to room temperature. This vial contains panta in a lyophilized powder form. It is along with a lot number and expiry date. Now, this is reconstituted with 15 ml of the growth supplement that is provided along with the kit. So, after addition of the growth supplement, the reconstituted banta is ready and 0.8 ml of this is added to the midget tubes.
using by safety precautions and an aerosol tip 0.8 ml is taken and is added to the midget tube. The tubes are now ready for inoculation. The decontaminated sputum deposit is mixed well by vortexing and 0.5 ml of the deposit is to be added to the tubes. Mixing well ensures that a uniform deposit is added to the tube. 0.5 ml is taken using a sterile pasture pipette up to the 0.5 mark and is carefully added to the midget tube. The pipette is discarded in the disinfectant bath. Now, once both the tubes are inoculated, they are ready now for loading into the midget system. Before removing them from the biosafety hood, the external surfaces of the tubes have to be wiped with a disinfectant. This is the Bactec Midget 960 system with a display screen that has user friendly icons. The system has three racks each capable of holding up to 320 tubes. One of the racks is pulled out and the insert button is pressed and the scanner is activated now. The barcoded tube is scanned and immediately the system indicates an empty slot with a flashing light where the tube has to be inserted and the rack is closed. Now let us see how to unload and read the midget culture tubes that have completed the protocol. The screen display shows that in rack A, 8 tubes are positive and 3 tubes are negative. The tubes have to be removed for follow up action. The rack is open and the positive icon button is pressed. Immediately the machine indicates all the tubes with positive reading with a flashing light. The tubes are removed one at a time and scanned. Once all the tubes are removed and scanned, the reading output is taken as a printout. Here we press the icon for printer and the reading is given as a printout. The barcode number on the printout is cross checked with that on the tube and the corresponding lab number is written on the printout. This tube has completed 15 days and 19 hours of protocol with 321 growth units. Once all the lab numbers are verified and entered, the cultures are subjected to identification and confirmation of growth. So, identification and micro of mycobacterium tuberculosis complex is essential whenever a tube is flagged positive by the instrument because as the instrument indicates only microbial growth, all cultures that are flashed positive by the midget instrument need to be identified for presence of MTBC. There are three tests that are done usually for confirmation. One is the AFB smear of the growth. This confirms presence of the acid fast bacilli and inoculation onto blood agar or brain heart infusion agar 
this rules out contamination and the immunochromatography test. The test uses gold coated antibody to the mycobacterium tuberculosis complex specific antigen MPT64. The presence of antigen is indicated by development of color and an inbuilt control is present to eliminate false results. There are three items that are required for identification test, a clear slide for AFB staining, the brain heart infusion agar plate and the immunochromatography strip. Using a long aerosol tip, the growth is mixed well and a small portion is removed from the bottom. One drop is placed on the agar. A few more drops are placed on the well of the strip. And a third drop is placed on the slide. The drop is spread using the tip and the smear is left inside the biosafety hood for air drying. We will now see the reaction in the ICT strip. The strip has gold coated MPT64 antigen. The antigen present in the culture that we placed on the disc moves up by capillary action and when it comes into contact with the antibody it results in the formation of a colored band in the test area. The inbuilt control has to be positive for the test result to be valid. The test is usually completed within minutes. ICT can be done only for culture and not directly for sputum. A culture is considered positive if AFB and ICT are positive. Let us look at the advantages and disadvantages of midget 960 for TB diagnosis. The advantages include that it can be done for diagnosis and DST to all drugs. Higher recovery rate is possible in sh a shorter time. Midget has a higher sensitivity than solid culture and growth supplements are added to enhance growth. The disadvantages include requirement of a biosafety level 3 facility which could be expensive because of high risk of aerosol generation. As I said it is already expensive, it requires a continuous power supply and air conditioning, it is prone for higher levels of contamination and there is a need for confirmatory tests like smear and ICT. With this we come to the end of the video demonstration on liquid culture for TB diagnosis. Thank you.